Section 4.3, permutations. On the last couple of days of math, we've been looking at uh, the factorial, which you see right here. And a factorial is really, really easy to use. A factorial, you type it into your calculator, and uh, four factorial spits out an answer of 24. What does it really mean? It really means four times three times two times one. Um, and I know that we went into some complicated versions of n and n minus 1 and did some crazy things with it. Uh, we will review those again. But in its truest sense, this is all a factorial really is. It's a number of ways something can be arranged. And on the very first day of factorials, we wrote down a factorial is a permutation. It's like a, a subcategory of a permutation. And we didn't even know what permutations were. And now we'll get the full definition. A permutation is a number of ways something can be arranged, and a factorial is like, a, again, a subcategory of it. So in this example, what I want you guys to think of again is there's maybe um, four people. I'll use some of the same names. There's Frank, there's John, there's Sally, and there's Courtney. And let's say they were gonna be arranged um, in a certain seating plan. Uh, how many different ways could we take these four people and arrange them in four desks um, in a classroom? Well, you could have it in this order. We could put Courtney first. We could put uh, Sally last. You could drive yourself crazy, even with just a small number of people, of how many different ways you could arrange them. Enter the factorial, which is a type of permutation. If we go four factorial, which comes out to be in our calculator or by multiplying these numbers out, 24, there would be 24 different ways to arrange those people. And so order is important. You see that in the PDF notes. Now you might be thinking, well, why do we need a new title? Why do we need a new word? Why is this a subcategory? Here is one that I want you to think of. What if there were only three deaths? Okay, now we're not trying to exclude anyone, but just go with this example. Um, what if there were three deaths and I was going to pick three of these four people and then still arrange them? So I might pick the first three people and I might go Frank, John and Sally. Now wait a minute, if I pick the first three people, I could also put Sally first, then Frank, then John. Wait a minute, I could put John first, and so there would be a whole bunch of different ways I could arrange these three people, but wait a minute, what if I decided to pick these three? What if it wasn't Frank? Well then it could be John, Sally, Courtney. Wait a minute, it could be Sally, Courtney, John, and you get it. There is all different groups of three that we could pick here and all different ways we could arrange them. We're still looking at how many ways something can be arranged, so order is important. And you could drive yourself absolutely crazy trying to figure it out, trying to map it out, trying to write down all the possibilities while we don't have to freak out. That is what a permutation is. And we actually have this button on our calculator. I'm gonna get you guys to look for it. It'll probably be fairly close to your factorial button. Um, the button is NP. Are. And you see that in number two in your in your PDF notes. This actually is, um, the, again, the formal definition of a permutation. And here's what it translates to. N is the total number of things that you have to choose from. So in this a quick example up here, there would be four different people. The R, that's how many at a time you're taking. So it would be a four for N and a three for the R. And so then it, it takes a step up. You realize why factorial is not the only type of way to arrange things. A factorial is when you're taking all four people out of the group of four. Well, what if you're taking a smaller group? That's where this comes in. Now, there is something that's written down in the PDF notes that for most of you, you never need to look at. If you have this button on your calculator, it's very easy to use. If we were doing this first example, you'd simply type four first, then the button NPR, and then you would type the three second. When you hit equals, you'd see what your answer is. Um, let's say you didn't have that button on your calculator. That's what this little formula does. You could put in the four and then four minus three, so just one factorial, and you'll still get the same answer as what you would have gotten. And so it's a really, really powerful tool. Now, I only put down one example for you guys to see, because once you kind of clue in on it, it's, um, it's really easy to use. I could even do a couple out loud. What I said was, you're really bored, you're tired of being stuck in your house, and you wanna go for a walk. And so let's say you take 10 songs and you download them, but you don't wanna walk for all 10 songs. You only wanna walk for seven songs, that'll be about the right length of walk that you want. So if you have 10 songs, and you wanna pick seven out of the 10, 
and then put them in a playlist. The question is, well, in how many different ways could you go for your walk and hear seven out of those 10 songs? And the order is important. We want to know which song would you hear first, which would you hear second, all the way up to seven. So there's multiple ways you could pick seven out of the 10 songs. And then once you've picked seven songs, there's multiple ways you can arrange all of those guys. And again, you would really drive yourself crazy trying to actually map that out, do an example, write it out in full, how many different options there are. Well, we don't do that. What we simply do is we use the permutation button on our calculator and it does it for us. If we type in 10 P7, what it's saying is, how many different ways can we arrange seven out of 10 things? We're picking seven out of the total of 10 and then still putting them in a certain order. Well, how many different arrangements is that? When we type it into our calculator, done. That's exactly how we could do it. Now, that is the end of the PDF notes. I'm just gonna throw you one more. Um, a few days ago, I said, uh, I love the Olympics. So here's a little bonus example. Um, it's not my favorite event, but the whole world seems to tune in to the 100 meter finals. And we have Canadians who do quite well in the 100 meter finals. Uh, so how many people are running in the 100 meter finals at the Olympics? There is gonna be eight runners, so there's gonna be eight lanes. And then everyone is looking for a medal. To make it that far is an honor, but people want a medal, and so there's three medals. There is going to be gold, silver, and bronze awarded. And let's say you wanted to figure out, just for the finals, in how many different ways could the gold, silver, and bronze be awarded? Well, that, here's what would happen. There's going to be three out of the eight who are going to be there. And so there's multiple different ways you can pick three out of the eight runners but then those three the first three well it could be Andre and then um, Bolt and then somebody else you know in first second and third in any arrangement and again it be, would be mind-boggling to figure out well how many different ways could you get first second and third well that's where our NPR button comes in what it's saying is there's eight total there's gonna be three out of the eight who finish in the top three. And in how many different ways can they be gold, silver, and bronze for second and third? That's what 8P3 does. And if you guys type it into your calculator, we would see our final answer. And uh, you can just give me a moment, I'll even type it into my calculator. I got 336 and 336 would be the total number of arrangements to award first, second, and third gold, silver, and bronze in the 100 meter finals at the Olympics.